gym. I've been every day. Coco. You didn't put any weight on That's true. I've Coco. been trying to tell him too. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You're supposed to, if you're going on high weight, why wouldn't you put that weight in the Yep, at 6, Alfonso, no later than 7. No, no later than 6.30, 6.45. Yep, daddy, I like that. Shit, I wouldn't even do that. I'd stop before that. Yep. 615, huh? We decided to calculate the weight of our backpacks the night before. I would notice a difference of 60 pounds. What I was thinking at the time, I cannot tell you. But any experienced hiker will tell you they do not want their pack to weigh more than 40 pounds, ideally. So we were off on our trip, about to embark the John Muir Trail, trying to accomplish 230 miles worth of wilderness. Entering Yosemite, we saw some of the most beautiful sights. Trail, baby. That's what it's all about. You got a buffalo. Look that waterfall. Right here. Where we're going. It was the sights that kept us going, though. Take your time, get it. Focus. Focus, bro. Use your skills. The first fish I hooked into doesn't quite go as planned. The fish ends up breaking the line on the rock. But there would certainly be more though. But there was no time to cry about a fish breaking a line. Had to strap up the boots, put on the pack, and get back on the trail. Because there was a lot more lying ahead. In the beginning, hiking with a 62-pound pack seems like it might be okay. But after time, it quickly begins to demoralize you. It's cool. Before I knew it, we were soon five days in. Day five, finishing day five. Yep, tomorrow, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I woke up with a frown, but by the end, I turned it upside down. Got through, got where I need. We're going way up over there, over that path. That 
Donahue Pass into Ansel Adams Wilderness. End of day five. Get the fire going. Get the tent set up. Be good. Nice and dangerous. This looks dangerous enough. Most people on this trail look sketchy. Huh? This looks like that path. Morning. Day versus day six or seven. One and two. Getting so confused. I'm pushing up down a heat pass. JG is carrying a little more weight today. He elected to. Appreciate it so much. Thank you. Hat tip, KG. Uh, again, I'm just trying to get over Donahue Pass and Island Pass. Get as close to Red's Meadow as we can. We're supposed to pick up a resupply today. All we have to eat is one packet of mashed potatoes. So, we know what we got waiting for us at Red's Meadow. All kinds of stuff. KG out there, we're making our way down Donahue Pass. Trucking along. That's all you can do. Day seven. We're going to pass Thousand Island Lakes today and we're headed, ultimately headed to Red Meadows. It was at Thousand Island Lakes when I was finally asked by a ranger to present my permit and I was more than happy to do so. It's amazing. Absolutely extraordinary. This place is dope. Yeah, yeah. Day eight, my phone is at 3%. We spent the night at Thousand Island Lake, it's beautiful. But we gotta get to Red's Meadow today or we risk starvation. Right now it's life or death. Having to get to Red's Meadow by any means, we resulted to hitchhiking. However, we were unsuccessful. Going to Mammoth. You gotta smile. It's it. As my pack was causing me to go slow, I told KG to go ahead. I thought I'd never eat. 
intro. That's a top ramen wafer. Yummy. We finally made it to Mammoth and stayed in the Mammoth Ski Resort. It was a wonderful location. And I was able to go to the post office and mail back some unnecessary items I did not need that were just added weight. From this point on, the trip would be much more smooth for me and I would be able to hike much more quickly. It's the top of the mountain. There's still snow. Remember, this is toward the end of July, so to find snow, you have to be very high. Just passed some travelers, and they said they've been all the way through. This is probably his favorite site. Get all the guts out. All that bone. You, you, you'll need the bone. It's getting real. Those clouds ain't too welcoming, buddy. It's coming down hard. It hurts. Oh! Oh! Son of a it was in this hailstorm my phone would okay, be ruined day 10. and so I would have Yesterday to rely on Kenyatta zero day. for any recording I just the got rest of the way. Out of the hailstorm we barely survived, we're freezing or we're aching and we're on this river trail to get back to civilization. It's tough out here. Get back on trail. This is an adventure of a lifetime. Over 11,000 feet. Feel a little lightheaded, but uh, this is what life is all about experiencing this adventure, exploration. Mankind has been doing this for thousands of years. This has been our thing. And this is my turn to test myself to see what I have. Uh, so far, it seems like I am. Fit, fit for business and survival. So, with that said, uh, hope the kids are all right that we've seen over there. Hope the young gentleman smoking a stogie is okay. Hope the young man who gave me the snacks and the dinner is okay. And my boy is okay. So, we're all good. We would eventually make our way to Lake Edison and have another zero day at a popular place called Vermilion Valley Resort or by some as VVR.
Amazing. Absolutely extraordinary. Come on, I guess. Even though we did not finish the 230 miles of the John Muir Trail, we did accomplish 130 of them. It was a great trip and will never be forgotten. My friend, Kenyatta, Kenyatta, and I had a great time and our lives would be changed by this experience and all of the people we would meet along the way.